It's time for a cup of coffee with Will and Chris at Slumberland Furniture. From Slumberland Furniture in Osage Beach, here are your hosts, William Holtz and Chris Schneider. Welcome back to Lake TV's weekly cup of coffee from Slumberland at the Lake. I'm Wild Will. I'm Uncle Chris. And we want to start this week by saying, man, isn't God good? God is so good, man. 168 weeks we've been allowed to do this, and we're genuinely thankful for you guys continuing to watch, offer feedback, share, and tune in. We are so blessed to be uh, doing a weekly talk show. I wanted it's, to do this growing up. It's really true that we are a couple of idiots, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, so it's the grace of God that allows us to I do pot, it. So I'm like kettle. So, that, exactly, yeah. And, and I'm telling you, <laughs> this week, an action-packed <laughs> show. I talked with Lake Ozark City Administrator Harrison Fry. A lot of stuff going on from roads and casinos and all kinds of stuff there. Plus the progress yeah. at Oasis, the amusement park development, a lot of progress there since we last talked. Plus, you and I attended the Lake West Chamber dinner. That was great. Last week. Uh, just a lot of fun. Had by all some great awards handed out. We'll tell you about that. Plus, some huge events this weekend from boat shows and fishing tournaments. Uncle Chris and I might win 100K. So, yeah. we got so much to talk about. But first, a message from our friends right here at Slumberland at the Lake. We've got the stuff to help you hit a bullseye for summertime fun. Not only do we have the dartboard, but we also have great new shuffleboard tables. You're gonna have your fun outside covered. We're gonna cover it inside with the new indoor games. And we're gonna have lots of places to sleep for your guests. You need to come check out our new shipment of sleeper sofas and sleeper sectionals. Come check us out, Slumberland Furniture, where we're bringing happy home. All right, so our first local headline of the week, you know, we had talked about the Reese development over yep. the last couple of weeks, and I had uh, posted an editorial. I had spent some time talking to Nick Reese and his partners, and in my article, I, I had not gotten to hear back from uh, Mayor Dennis Newberry. We had talked since then, and that led me to talk with City Administrator Harrison Fry. And so um, some things going on here at the city of Lake Ozark before we get into Reese development. I first want to update something I knew nothing about as we look at the road projects they've been talking about, right? It's supposed to start this spring into the summer. Uh, but first, uh, Harrison updated me. They just had, on March 12th, kind of a tough situation where a main water line broke in the city of Lake Ozark out of Osage Hills Road outside of Osage National Golf Course. A contractor actually took out a main water Ooh, line, wee. and that caused some major uh, problems to the road surface. It needed to be closed temporarily and actually caused about $40,000 worth of damage to the area. And so with some road improvements, there's numerous phases and steps. And so the first project that they're working on right now is to repair that. Uh, and I asked, I was like, so where does that money come from, right? 40 grand. Yeah. Is that out of the general fund? And Harrison goes, now typically, yes, we would use that from our general fund. And we have, you know, our financial state as a city is outstanding right now. However, with it being a contractor, is actually the city's insurance that filed a claim with the insurance of the contractor. And they're still waiting for that process. And whether or not they get the full 40,000 or, you know, partial. Uh, payout there. Harrison does say the city's got the uh, capital to get that taken care of. And so that was kind of unexpected, yeah. but still on pace and on schedule starting early May, hey, right around the corner, is the first resurface project in the city of Lake Ozark. We've been waiting for this, right? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so from Bagnell Dam Boulevard at School Road, you know, at the top of the Bagnell Dam Strip right there, kind yep. of across from King's Academy. Yep. So from there, all the way to JB Hooks, where that overpass is, they're gonna do a resurfacing. They're gonna mill down two inches into the asphalt and they're going to resurface that. Luckily, as they went down two inches, they realized the structural integrity of the road didn't need any more than two well, inches that's good. milled down. So that's not gonna be quite as expensive as potentially anticipated. And then the second phase of that resurface, you're like, okay, why only do up to there? Well, it's wise not to do it all at once, right? You're gonna have closures, one lanes, things like that. And so then this fall, they're then gonna take that school road to the other side of the dam. And that's gonna be a little bit more of an extensive uh, process. That's larger scale. You're gonna to have to seal that, aggregate that. It's gonna to have to sit for a while and cure. And then the final phase is gonna be a road sealer. We'll roll over and, and do the final seal of that portion. And that's gonna be about a two and a half, three week progress. And, and so it's not gonna be a long progress, yeah. but so you can get both of those resurfacing projects should be done 
this fall, which is really exciting because that is what we hear so much of. Yeah. The roads. Yeah. The roads. And so it's not all the roads in the city of Lake Ozark, but it is the Bagnell Dam Boulevard up to J.B. Hooks there uh, at the overpass. And so massive improvements, and that's going to be getting underway like right around the corner. Well, and like you said, everybody's been yelling and screaming for this to happen. So it's great that it's finally going to start happening. Sounds like they're doing it wisely. Do the first half, you know, now basically in the spring, do the second half in the fall. So we'll remind you in the fall that that's coming again because the second part of that's going to be right in front of the strip, basically yeah. the main part of the strip. But it's got to be done, right? Yeah. I mean, uh, they have to do this stuff. So that's great to hear. That's good news. Yeah, so that's really, really uh, big. And I reached out, of course, to, to kind of find out about Reese Development. And the nice thing is, if you haven't read my editorial, I'd encourage you to do so. But this is going to be a long-term project, right? This is not just a one uh, building or one attraction. It's going to be in collaboration with the city, uh, trying to improve roads, infrastructure, things of that nature. And so it kind of goes hand in hand with that. And so other things that I wanted to talk to Harrison about, I was like, well, hey, what about uh, this summer? Like, don't we feel like the city of Lake Ozark is going to see more visitors than ever before? And Harrison says, yeah, you hit the nail on the head. He said, come summertime, we're actually going to have a higher police presence, uh, especially for weekends and those highly saturated events where you start to see a lot of people into the area. Yep. He said, people don't understand, but our public work system gets strained in the summer. And so they've actually be reinvesting in not only their systems and procedures, but their people, important roles within the city. They have been looking at and making sure that they're compensated right and they're empowered to do their job and have the resources necessary. And what Harrison said is some of the key capital improvement projects are what they're really focusing in on, like the roads, like the things of that nature. And so we should see more of that. Um, and I did bring up, I was like, well, that's cool. What about Reese development on, on your perspective? Yeah. You know? And he goes, uh, I want to assure the community that regardless of what's to come, like everyone has all this speculation from family friendly and nostalgic. And he said, regardless of what's to come next, he said, I want to make clear that these demolitions are a hundred percent necessary for the city of Lake Ozark. You talk about health and safety. You talk about visual appearance. He goes, regardless as a city, what we're going to have there moving forward, this is the necessary step that had yet to be taken. And so this now opens the door for other development and things of that nature. And he said, man, it has been so great to work with them. He said, I don't just really consider this a developer. He goes, as crazy as it is, uh, it's kind of like a marriage with the city of Lake Ozark. And I said, so Harrison, is this like an ideal developer? I said, because you know developers, the smooth talkers, they sure. want a good deal. And I don't get this sense. And he said, it is about an ideal marriage, an ideal partnership, just because of the thinking, the uh, diligence, and the integrity that Nick Reese and his group have. So he was really excited. And while I had Harrison, I was like, hey, the only other thing that I want to know about is casinos. Like, we don't hear anything about What's the up casinos with that? anymore, yeah, right? right? And so I said, let's talk about the Osage Nation. And he said, so as far as I understand, that's still in the federal process uh, okay. right now. And so we're waiting there. And he said, as for the private casino, that's with Pruitt and the Bally Sports team, you know, that would be a riverfront casino. It'd be the 14th uh, gaming license or casino license issued by the state of Missouri should that exception take place. They're still gathering signatures to get that on the November ballot. Yeah. Remember, we've talked about they're confident they're going to have enough signatures. And so, uh, and Harrison Fry, he did mimic and rival that. He goes, yeah, I think they feel pretty good about getting those signatures. And so that'll be the next step. So but I, on that, they're trying to change the Missouri Constitution to add another casino on the water. This one would be on the Osage, uh, supposedly somewhere near Lake Ozark, right? Right. Yeah. And so it's always confusing because you don't have a casino at Lake of the Ozarks for all of these years. I think they had them, you know, back in the day. Early. Yeah. Early. And uh, now, over the last couple of years, you've had more than one casino project or thing being discussed. And so it's always important for me to talk. Okay, so Osage Nation, that's the one we heard of first, right? Yeah. That is the Osage Nation uh, sovereign nation, the Native American uh, tribe. And they would be putting in for the sovereignty. They wouldn't need to have a gaming license. They wouldn't actually be under the control of the Missouri Gaming Commission. They're the ones that have the land across from Menards and yep. the movie theater there. And so the process is federal right now. They've got to have the land sitting in a trust. They've got to go through all these hoops. And so we did talk with Mike Lear, the Missouri Gaming Commission chair, about a year and a half ago uh, in regards to this. And that reminds me, I ought to reach back out to him yeah. and see if we can't talk That'd again, be interesting. you, you know, about all the changes and what this private casino, because that's the Osage Nation and the private, as you alluded to, 
Right now, the Missouri Constitution allows for 13 gaming uh, licenses or casino licenses, and we've hit that, right? We have 13 casinos, and it's hit the ballot a handful of times before, and it's never uh, got through, but they're trying to say, hey, we want to amend it. We want a 14th riverfront, and so that would be in proximity to the lake. The benefit the city says is the private means they could collect taxes, they could get those uh, benefits, whereas the Osage Nation, they would be under different guidelines. It all gets really confusing, so it's important to, to identify Osage Nation, completely different from the riverfront yeah. private casino. Both would be casinos, but completely differently run, right? Indians would be their own separate nation, basically. And then the other one would be uh, Missouri. But it seems like since the uh, Osage Indians have come up and you know bought the land and all that stuff, this other group has really gotten serious about it. And I actually think they're in the lead right now to get a casino in here. I think eventually they'll probably both be here. And that's what I want to know is, is there a realistic possibility that both casinos end up coming to fruition? And I did ask Harrison, I said, uh, and I might be wrong. I'm like, but is there any truth to the fact that it seemed like in the early days, the city was very pro Osage nation. Seemed like and it. now since this private one has surfaced that now it seems like the support has gone away from Osage Nation and now seems to be completely behind the private, the Riverfront Casino, and he goes, well, I can't speak on that. All I can do is update on this. And I mean, he's diligent. He's the city administrator. He's not really uh, the one that would be able to say that, uh, but I really appreciate Harrison Fry. He's very uh, genuine when I get to talk to him, very open, and there's no question that I've ever asked him that he's balked at or refused to answer. And I'm telling you, that is the most important position in the city of Lake Ozark, above the mayor, above the alderman. The city administrator is the one making things happen. And the city of Lake Ozark hit a home run with Harrison Fry. Yeah, and remember there was a little controversy about him a couple years ago. Was he ready for the job? Was he too young? They brought in another experienced guy, you know, that he kind of learned from for an extra year or two, and he really seems to be doing a good job. Does he still have the mustache, the handlebar yeah. mustache? How about that, man? Best I don't know if it's, if it's handlebar. I got to... Pay closer attention. I saw him recently out having dinner, and now yeah. I, I can't remember. I wasn't paying that close. Well, attention. he had a handlebar uh, a couple years ago, and then he got rid of it. So maybe he just grew a normal one now, or something like that. He's, but it was the best mustache in town. Yeah, he's, he's as cool as the other side of the pillow, and he's young. I mean, yeah. he is very polished and very professional. So we truly appreciate Harrison Fry uh, for talking with us. Now, in other uh, development news and things we've been covering, you know, we've got the the Nichols Apartments, yeah. um, and those seem to be back on track. We haven't got a definite yes from developer Jeff Tagadoff, but uh, I see there's more concrete foundation going up since yep. I was last there as I drove by Tuesday morning, and we are set to talk next Wednesday, the 24th uh, of April, and get an update on that, as well as Oasis at Lakeport. You know, the Lakewood condos, the Lakewood Resort there, still standing, and he said he's going to have an update on the timeshares. Yeah. And so I did go by this morning as well and look at the Oasis at Lakeport site, and they're making tons of progress there. Have you noticed? I have. That retaining wall just keeps getting bigger, and I've noticed over on that peninsula over on the other side, they've got big things going on over there too, so they are full speed ahead. And so if you're a gambling man, if you're to gamble on whether or not this is back on track, I can't say definitely, but it does look like major progress, major work is being done, and we'll look forward to updating you in the coming weeks as we talk with developer Tegedoff on the uh, 24th. Now, we got an opportunity last week to go to the Lake West Chamber Dinner. Yeah. Uh, it was at the Board of Realtors in the Chamber Office in Sunrise Beach, and man, what a great time. Had a good time. You know, the Lake West Chamber... Uh, Mike and his whole team over there are incredible. The business owners on the west side are amazing. Uh, and so every time we get together with them and we do this annual dinner with them, it is just such a good time. It's so much fun. And, uh, uh, you know, each of the chambers has their own personality. Lake Area has its personality. Camdenton has, and Lake West has its own personality, which is very fun, very, you know, uh, non-stuffy kind of yeah. a thing. They had... Uh, turkey legs as part of the dinner, you know, and everything. So I want to say too, I did not use silver. Uh, you didn't. No, I refused to use silver on those turkey legs. I tried, but it's impossible. You got to go with the hands on the turkey legs. So, well, you eat a turkey <laughs> leg, right? Hey, shout out to Captain Ron's yeah. for the uh, incredible spread. They had that do you that like Cheeto corn? Did mm, you try that? I didn't try it, but I saw it. Oh, yeah, that's right. You're on a diet. You've yeah, been doing trying, really- Trying, not doing well. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. But hey, it was a great night, and we got to give a shout out to 
annual MC Matt Sutcliffe yeah. does such a great job, and he got some help from Shannon, who was the uh, circus lead or the ring, whatever you call it, ring right? master, yeah, yeah, the ring master, yep. as it was a circus theme, and they gave out some awards, which are always great to highlight. I wanted to announce Rose Wright with Mortgage Headquarters. Uh, she was awarded, just a sweetheart. She does so much for the chamber. Uh, former president, who's outgoing. Sue Komet won yeah. a service award, and Sue is phenomenal. We know her through the uh, annual employment conference here at the lake, and she does such a good job. So involved. Wonderful lady. And uh, and then, of course, we saw the ambassador of the year, Tracy McKinney, yeah. who, man, that lady loves the chamber. It's amazing. You won't go to the expo or a social or a chamber event and not be greeted uh, by Tracy, so you love that. And then the big one, the distinguished citizen and community partner, very fitting, Mark Mawson with Polylift Boat Lift. Made me cry, yeah. you know. I mean, he's Mark is such an amazingly great guy. So is his brother, Mike. Yeah. I mean, really, they're a team. So when one wins something, they both win something. Uh, but Mark is so emotional, he got up there and he started, and I started to cry, and, you know, it's just a blubber fest out there. Uh, so. and, and it was uh, a great moment because you love seeing Mark get up there, and the first thing he said is, none of this is possible without my brother. Yep. Uh, Mike, because, you know, Mark does, he is more involved hands-on a lot of times and things, so he gets awarded or recognized more, but yeah, those two together, pretty incredible, and for Polylift Boat Lifts, they continue to give back, and I realize something important about what Polylift has done, because there's boat lifts, right, but what they've done for other marine products, mm -hmm. like Wet Steps and uh, Icon and things of that nature, there's so many lake inventions and products for your boat, your dock, your lake life, that Polylift has helped people, put in their store and introduced to people and allowed their business to get up. So it's not just about making a great product and building a legacy, which their dad started and they've carried on very, very finely, but it's about spreading the love and passing on what you know in those introductions because the greatest thing we can do is not necessarily make money or make a great product, but it's about those connections we yep. can make to empower others. And the Mossons have certainly done that. You know, and I keep trying to get them on the Community Spotlight Show to get the, the story of Poly Live Boat Lifts and how it got started and, you know, how it's come to be what it is. They're so modest, you know, they don't really want to talk about themselves and, you know, pump themselves up. But we'll get uh, Tiffany on. She'll talk about I'll it. I'll keep trying. Yeah. Okay. So, so Tiffany, early. will you at least come tell us the Polly Lip story? <laughs> she she might. Oh uh, God, we love Tiffany too, and I know for her, she loved seeing Mark get awarded yeah, because absolutely. she's another one. She wins stuff all the time, and yeah. so uh, pretty neat. Now another award I thought was really cool: the Entrepreneur Award. Cody Hennick with Premier Advantage. What that young man has done yeah. uh, is just incredible. I didn't realize he was so young. For mm -hmm. some reason, I thought he was like a middle-aged, you know, guy, very established, strong businessman. He is an established, strong businessman, but he's just a young guy. Yeah. I'm st I am was just stunned because I'd never met him before. He bought Advantage Marine, of course, yeah. from Dave and Connie Weir a couple of years ago when he changed the name to Premier Advantage, wanted to keep the Advantage name in there. And since then, not only has he grown that business, but they just offered their water location. I think it's the 38 mile marker, but yeah. it is massive. I saw pictures at the chamber dinner of their location on the water. I mean, I cannot get over what that guy is invested into that. And something that's really neat is when you talk to Cody's staff, including Dave and Connie, mm -hmm. everybody loves working for him. Yeah, that was the, his whole theme. He's like, I didn't win this award. My people won this award. You know, it's not me. And like he it's called us. them out. Yeah. Just, it was awesome. It was. It was amazing. Yeah. And I, I got to say, I didn't know a lot about Cody Hennick. I've talked to him on the phone a couple of times, but very impressed with that young man and what he's been able to do. And then, of course, our good friends, uh, Brittany and Ivan and the Rodriguez and Perez family. Oh, yeah. From Carmelitas and Don Chilios, they won the Small Business of the Year, much deserved. And uh, that was super cool to see. I love those people. Me I love too. Brittany. That whole family is amazing. Uh, they love Lake TV. If you ever go in to have dinner there, Lake TV is on. Yeah. You know, and uh, that is fantastic. But couldn't have gone to nicer, better folks. Love Brittany. I think you went to school with Brittany yeah. back in the day, didn't you? Yeah, she was a couple oh. years younger than me. Great athlete, but mm. Brittany always a super kind individual. And to see her have the success, and you know, of course, she married into that family, and I know she has been a huge part of oh, her success because she works. So she hard. is the community relations yeah. uh, person, and you know, she came from work. She rushed there, got there, didn't really know about yeah. it in her work clothes, and. It was just really cool to see these small businesses that are giving back so much. And, 
you know, that's hard work. It is. That place is packed all the time. Man. <laughs> and I tell you what, I, I there has never been a time, one time, I went to Don Chalillo's like last week with Michelle, uh, and I, I did not see Brittany. I think that might be the only day of the year she took off. Or she was probably at the other because, store. She probably was. She was probably over at Carmelita's. You're right. Absolutely. They work so hard over there. They do. And hey, I'm going to just give a word to the wise. You go to Carmelita's, get their steak Carmelita's. Mm -hmm. It's a ribeye marinated, sauteed mushrooms, onions, just loaded oh. in white queso dip. Uh, that's one you yeah. ought to try. All right. Hey, moving on. There's some big events this weekend. Uh, first, amateur fisher, yeah. men, women, you could catch one fish this weekend and you could cash in with a hundred thousand dollars yeah that exists it's the lake of the ozarks big bass bash spring 2024 and uh just unbelievable i'm looking at this chris mm -hmm. and okay so over a hundred and forty four thousand dollars yep and by hourly payouts which is just unbelievable first place takes home a hundred k wow second place 20k third place 10 and fourth place gets five and uh it equates to over $330,000 in total payouts and prizes. Uh, why are we not fishing in this? That's wild will money, man. I mean, uh, to tell you what, and last year's story, last fall's winter was so cool because it was a guy and a bunch of his buddies from Illinois. I believe they they work in the sheriff's department in Illinois. So they, uh, you know, rent an Airbnb. They go out like in the first hour, they catch this 6.55 pound uh, bass, like in the first hour or so of the whole tournament, and then they sweat it out the rest of the way to hope that they, you know, they hang on and and they win. And that was the winner, hundred thousand dollars. The coolest thing about it, I wanted to go <laughs> on and say that Charlie Terrell, the organizer of the tournament with Midwest Fishing Tournaments, yeah. said Dunn announced from the stage <laughs> that he split that money five ways, with meaning his him and his four buddies all got twenty k. Yeah, really cool. Good for you, man. I, I love that guy. What's his name? Uh, what is his name up here? Uh, Something Dunn. Yeah. Chris Dunn. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Man, good for you, Chris. His that's, nickname is Hooch. He got that nickname when he was 17, apparently. That's awesome. Yeah. Chris Dunn. That guy's as cool as the other side He's 43 of years old. Hello as well, man. Good for you. Hey, and another big event, if you're not fishing, it's probably because you don't have your own boat. Well, here's your opportunity. The yep. Lake of the Ozarks Marine Dealers Association has their in-water boat show this weekend at Dog Days, uh, pretty incredible. Here's all the basics you're gonna need for your season on the water. Uh, the big boy from boats and cruisers and wave runners, runabouts, pontoons, performer boats, yachts. Uh, if it floats or it's marine <laughs> related, it's, it's gonna probably be gonna be there. Yeah. And one thing to look out for while you're there, our friends over at Sir Doug Yamaha are gonna have their brand new Axopars. Ooh. These boats, you wow. talk about luxury, innovation, speed, uh, performance, and no one's gonna have one at the lake. And the two they're gonna have there have this Barabbas finish. Oh, you're talking about trim, your matte finish, tinted windows, it, it looks unbelievable. So just go to the boat show and go by and see Greg Serdike and their team with Mason Bennett and see if you can get a look at one of those Axo parts because Chris, this is the wildest boat. I, I've never in a million years would have thought this would be a boat you'd see on Lake of the Ozarks, but I cannot wait. I'll be on it this and week. And you've been on a lot of boats. I mean, yeah. I love Wild Will and Wild Boats. It's greatness. And that's what, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Friday from 1 to 7. Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. And Sunday, 10 to 4. Yeah, and just if you also just go look on Facebook or Google the LAMDA Lake Ozark Marine Dealers Association, all of their information, including their upcoming shows following and one last time, that's at Dog Days off of Jeffrey's right there. So mm -hmm. big weekend uh, around the lake. And we talk about Serdai Yamaha. I saw a headline. Um, it's not, it's pretty widespread here at Lake TV who my favorite racer is, right? You know, we met him here right. recently. Absolutely. Myra Coyle. So it's no surprise it's that like he runs It's like fanboy. Whenever, whenever Coach Pinkle or Myra Coyle show up at the studio, he's all over him, man. It's incredible. Coach! <laughs> Myrick! Yeah, man, I'm, I'm still a kid at heart. It'll never leave. And of course, Myrick, it's no secret. He runs with Tyler Miller, mm -hmm. who uh, is incredible, MCON World National Champion. Um, and this is from Matt Trulio with Speed on the Water. So Monster, they've got high-performance sports all over the world, yep. and, and their boat racing is one wing of that. And they're having a Aquacross Celebrity Challenge in Daytona Beach 
next weekend, April 9th, maybe this weekend. Yeah, this weekend, April 19th and 21st. And so Tyler Miller's trading in his super cat, his catamaran, his skater cat, and he is going to be on a Yamaha Wave Runner for this event. That's wow. the word from Michelle Petro, the director of operations for Powerboat P1, which produces this Aqua X series. They will be racing in the surf on Wave Runner's watercraft that had been donated by Yamaha, Petro said. Aqua X is an endurance race on a personal watercraft. The platform attracts racers from all over the world. This year we have racers from New Zealand, New Zealand, Japan, Canada, and South America. It's uh, They're presently in Las Vegas for a Monster Energy event. Miller wasn't able to talk about it. I texted him as soon as I saw this, and I was like, yes, man, this is going to be awesome. He sent me a thumbs up and said, hope you can watch. Um, so his, skate, his Class 1 skater cat currently is on display at Performance Boat Center, open house and boat show down there, so not here at the lake. Um, and Miller and teammate Myrick Coyle will compete in their first of the Union International Montonatique Class 1 World Championship Series, May 17th. That's that series they won the title for last year, so right. this season officially gets underway May 17th through 19th in Cocoa Beach. That's Thunder at Cocoa Beach. It starts the racing circuit. They'll be down a couple weeks after that for shootout offshore. But in the meantime, my favorite, second favorite racer, Tyler Miller, is going to be in this uh, aquacross endurance race on a Yamaha Wave wow. Runner, baby. That's not easy. I mean, you've been on a Wave Runner all day long one time, right? And it, like, was... Because you were doing the, you were covering the dam to dam or something. Now, we were doing the uh, Freedom Run with right. Sirdike. Oh, you go from here to Truman Dam and oh, back, oh, and oh, oh. yeah, I wouldn't recommend it on full blast, full throttle, especially on a uh, a beautiful brand new Yamaha Wave Runner, oh. fully loaded that just goes seventy plus. That'd make miles you a little an hour. sore. Right? Yeah, I certainly was. So that's cool, and you know, I just so. Uh, intrigued by the racing industry anymore and so to see these guys have this kind of status it's really cool tyler miller he owns mcon construction you know he was a fanboy himself of the racing industry yep. and found out that he too could get involved and now he's part of a celebrity challenge uh with the other monster guys and pastrana and i mean it's unbelievable so good for tyler miller and he's a he's a hometown boy i know he's not here full time but he has a beautiful home here he's a Lake Local, and so good luck this weekend to Tyler Miller. I'll tell you, I will be watching. Yeah, well, and keep in mind, since we're talking about water, we've got the uh, shootout offshore race coming up, the P1 race, uh, first big shootout race of the year. And so this week on the Community Spotlight Show, we're talking with shootout executive director Leah Martin about this first rate, uh, the race of the season coming up. Uh, I believe it's right around Memorial Day weekend, right? Yeah, and it's going to be different this year. We'll have yeah. a lot more information here in the coming weeks as we approach the event, but there will be racing on Friday and racing on Saturday. So there's going to be two days of racing this year. There's going to be a street party. There's going to be concerts. There's going to be auctions. There's going to be all kinds of cool stuff. Yeah. Stay tuned right here to Lake TV is the official television partner of Shootout Offshore and Shootout 2024. And now, Leo will tell us about a bunch of those things this week on the Community Spotlight Show, so tune that in. And also make sure at 6, noon, and 6, you catch DJ Kyle and Happy Hour. Yeah. The Half Hour Show gets better and better each and every week, and I noticed last week we kicked off a brand new series, Can Kyle Cook? So good. He was in the kitchen at the Branding Iron, uh -huh. and uh, that's going to be fun. Listen, if you're a local restaurant <laughs> and you want to get DJ Kyle in your kitchen, now available, brand new series, uh, Can Kyle Cook? And something tells me, being on the farm and in the studio mm -hmm. and in the music, studio the guy definitely can cook as well oh my god i love that show kyle is so fun because he takes us out to his farm and you know you're going out there in a couple of weeks to run with the pigs out there i think right we'll go chase the swine oh my goodness we got to watch that but it's just such a fun show it really is it's going to be awesome also don't miss weekend at the lake with david leatherberry every thursday through sunday and all of lake tv shows can be watched on all lake tv platforms not just como connect Channel 90 and our web stream at mylaketv.com. But don't forget, download the Lake TV app on your Roku or Amazon Fire device. Free of charge, you can watch our live channel or our on-demand playlist, including Cup of Coffee, each and every week. Well, my friends, I can't thank you enough uh, for tuning in to another edition of Cup of Coffee with Wild Will. And Uncle Chris. Boy, the time flies, doesn't it? Certainly does. From Slumberland at the Lake, we'll see you guys next week. Next week.